Hi everybody, I'm Kushan. Welcome to Command Live Pole Positions. This is the first part of the live stream I did right after it was released. I was joined by Gunner98, the creator of most of the live scenarios, as well as the Northern Fury series. It was unplanned and the first minute or so is us getting things set up. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, please remember to like and subscribe. Can you hear me, Gunner? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, super. Thank you uh, for uh, for coming on here. So uh, I think we're going to go and get started now. So um, this will be kind of like an off-the-cuff interview. I wasn't actually expecting you to, to be around uh, tonight because I think you're in England, right? Or over there in the UK? Uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, double speak here. No, I'm in uh, I'm in Canada. I've been traveling back and forth to the UK quite a bit. Oh, okay. Um, I think what you're hearing is you're hearing uh, both the stream sound and uh, the voice channel. I think if you uh, go ahead and mute the sound in the stream. So uh, where did you, uh, what what made you uh, come up with the, uh, I guess, the, the premise for this scenario? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find the uh, mute button in the, uh, in the stream here. Um, I think if you hover over the video, click on the uh, bottom left. Okay, got it. Okay, uh, what made me do this scenario? Well, uh, when we uh, when we come up with uh, 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 the concept for a live scenario, there's a bunch of people, um, the uh, guys at Slytherin, Sunburn, uh, Paul Bridge, and a few of the guys, uh, we come up with ideas. Uh, this one, uh, I believe, was Sunburn's idea. Uh, it's a it's a hot topic on some parts of the internet and uh, it's a, an area that hasn't been really gamed before uh, so I just took it up as a challenge. Yeah, I know the uh, I think the only um, scenario I recall in this area is actually like the um, what was it um, under ice I believe it was called from the original command release. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, and that was uh, definitely a Cold War one if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, I think it was like mid '90s, but yeah. So, um, I guess wh where do you start with something like this? Do you do you start with the U.S.? Do you start with the the Russians, or I mean, how start with a lot of a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, for this one here, I started with the Russians uh, because they're uh, apparently, according to uh, some sources on the net. Uh, getting quite active uh, on the on the Arctic Ocean floor. Uh, so I tried to um, do a lot of research on that. It's difficult because in this case because there's not that many sources. Uh, so there's a lot of speculation uh, with with what I'm plotting down. But in this one I started with the Russians and then I said okay if I was the American uh, how would I handle this and it went from there. So, uh, I mean, how do you decide on, for something like this, like, where did you, like, come up with, like, the force levels? It looks like we've got a couple of uh, SS, well, map's kind of tweaking out on me. Um, it looks like we've got a couple of SSNs and the uh, Jimmy Carter, I believe that's a SSGN, right? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, th yeah, again, this one is uh, a bit unique, but... Uh, what I tried to set up with the uh, with the Russians was what I think they might be trying to do with the uh, resources they've got. They've got three uh, uh, modified submarines, and they're all represented in the scenario. So I said, so I built that, and I said, okay, they're going to have escorts. Um, and then I flipped to the other side and say, uh, how do I balance it to give reasonable resources to the American? Uh, to to achieve 
whatever I want to achieve. And as I build the the um, the various mission sets that uh, I think the player is going to try and do, I just try and make sure they've got the resources that aren't overpowering and are balanced uh, to do those mission sets. All right. So I looks like I'm. So I'm. I guess looks like I have to establish a couple patrol lines. So I've got a couple of uh, my. Go and send yeah, my. Yeah, you'll have three SSNs uh, to establish the patrol lines, and you've got a couple of special mission subs as well. And so, uh, you're. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you're going to have to be very careful with depth. I, I'm already noticing that, you know, starting depth is minus 82 feet and below the layer is, you know, minus, what is the layer at? The layer is at about 131 feet, so not really deep at all. So definitely no uh, going deep and cruising at full speed. No, and, and the uh, salinity in the Arctic is uh, quite low, so the, the layer raise, rises and is very close to the surface. Um, so I noticed we've we've got also had the USS Dallas. You uh, do realize that the uh, Dallas is uh, no longer in service? Yeah, and the reason the Dallas is there is uh, the the database didn't have the um, flight two with the um, uh, the what is it called the DDV okay. uh, the DDV capability. So I kept the the Dallas in there even though it is retired a couple of years ago. Uh, Actually, so there are recently, uh, just recently retired, I believe. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm just trying to remember. It's been a couple of months, but there, there are, I believe, three or four Flight Two uh, Los Angeles class that have the uh, the the dive or the uh, special forces capability, uh, but they're not modeled in the database yet. So oh, okay. I just kept the Dallas. All right, so what is the mission of our Dallas? So the Dallas is actually carrying our special forces teams. Yep. And we need, looks like we need to, I'm assuming we're going to have to drop them off somewhere. Equipment table to have the Russian Shelf Autonomous Transmission Stations. Yeah, there are three of them out there, I think, or four perhaps. And you got to choose choose wisely based on a terrain analysis. So are these are these dropping the teams onto land? Is that what we're doing? Or is yeah. We, okay. So this isn't like an underwater op. You know, we actually have to drop these off on the uh, on the surface. Well, the uh, the the skit with the Dallas would be it goes to the um, to a drop off area, and the uh, the uh, diver delivery vehicle delivers to a landing. Then the special forces do uh, do their mission on land. Then they go to an exit point and get picked up by the rib that's also uh, in the Dallas. Oh, okay. All right. So I think we will start off. It's kind of weird, like looking up here at the poles. It's like I, uh, I kind of pan up and then it like rotates the view around. It is tricky. Um. So it looks like we do have. It looks like three, and we are detecting a couple goblins and a couple bogies from the U.S. Mississippi and. That goblin is right on top of the Mississippi. Now I'm going to assume that that is probably hostile. Uh, this is a lot of whales up there. That that's a oh nope it has been classified as a biologic so we've got a whale. Hopefully yeah the, uh, yeah. So this is set in uh, at the end of June and that is uh, that's a major whaling season up in the Arctic. You'll also find a, a couple of uh, Greenpeace type boats floating around. Now, are the Greenpeace uh, boats targets, or are they just there for uh, flavor? They're there for annoyance. Okay. Are so they... there's going there's going to be some things that you're going to be asked to do later on that you're not going to be wanted to de uh, you're not going to want to be detected at. Oh, that uh, makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> So we're going to send the Mississippi around here to the uh, North Wind uh, patrol line. Um, and then we'll bring up the uh, Carter from uh, through the bearing and the Chukchi Sea to the North Wind patrol line. And Sea Wolf will proceed to the La Lamanosov bridge. Yeah, you've got it. Uh... 
Uh, your, your pronunciation is probably just as good as mine there. I'm going to say my, my, my pronunciation is known to be bad. So, <laughs> oh, we've, looks like we've got the USS Illinois way over here, on basically between Greenland. Yeah, coming in from Greenland. All right, so we'll go ahead. So it looks like this is another patrol line of ours. Yeah, you know, the, I, I, there, should, there should be three. So what's the... Uh, Okay, so the two patrol zones. So what's the... So we've got... Oh, so it's actually the Northwind box. Okay, I see what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually find this uh, kind of an interesting concept of, uh, you know, you, you hear about the Russians, you know, running SOSIS through the, you know, Greenland, Iceland, UK gap, you know, all the time. And it's it's kind of a given, you know, with with, you know, pretty much any Cold War scenario these days. So I do, I do like the concept of, you know, kind of the reverse. Yeah, the, uh, and, and if it is under construction, uh, it would really cramp the U.S.'s uh, strategic maneuverability with its SSBNs. Now, I got the impression that, the, that our SSBNs, you know, kind of stayed more out to sea than they did kind of close in. Yeah, they're they're probably in the Northwest Pacific and and the North Atlantic, uh, but there's a good chance that they're they're also in the Arctic during the summers. No, oh, that makes sense when the they're, Arctic they're, ice thaws. Yeah, there's a lot of traffic in the North Atlantic. Yeah, I mean you, I mean, one has to wonder. You know, I I doubt you know a, a merchant traveling through the North Atlantic would be seen, but that's you know it's kind of the the like one of those likely spots to to hide in. Yeah. Also, seems like the the Arctic would be you know except for like Alaska and, and Canada for the U.S. It would seem like the the Russians would have an easier time operating there than than we would. Well, the uh, aircraft and support support aircraft anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean the Americans certainly have uh, pioneered. Uh, submarines in the Arctic through the 50s and 60s. So uh, I do believe, and I'm not an American submariner, so I do believe they consider the Arctic their, their sort of turf. Uh, they're the first ones to, to do the, um, the uh, break through the ice sort of thing and the ice station zebra, if you remember that movie from the 60s. Uh, um, I actually that, never, never saw it. I don't think okay. I've actually ever heard of it. Okay, it's a good movie. Uh, it's it's a little sixty-ish, but all right. So we'll send. We'll start from left to right here, as far as our approach for the Dallas. Um, actually, we got another one that looks like it's a little closer. So I know. So you you you've done a couple other uh, you know command live scenarios at this point. Um, do you have a favorite? I think my favorite is actually Korean Missile Crisis. Uh, that one may actually need updating here uh, based off of today's <laughs> events. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, uh, it was pretty classic that uh, within four days of the scenario release, North Korea launched uh, those four missiles simultaneously. Um, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a, it, it, that's a hot topic. So I, th I think that's my favorite. Uh, uh, I think my next most favorite is probably uh, You Brexit, You Lose It. If you guys uh, have any uh, questions for Gunner, please uh, feel free to um, say so in chat and we'll uh, go and uh, answer him or try to get him answered. I'm sure he's, uh, <laughs> he's probably not going to be willing to talk about anything that might or might not be coming up. So... So uh, you also do the uh, the Northern Fury series. How is uh, how's that coming along? Uh, I, that's I, that's that's what I really enjoy doing. Um, the uh, it's I've just done three in the Indian Ocean, which was a complete distraction. I hadn't planned on doing them, but they they just happened, and uh, they were a lot of fun. Um, I've got to go back and uh, and do the American amphibious scenarios uh, on Iceland. And uh, that's that's sort of my next task. I'm I'm also doing uh, some of those uh, uh, tutorials, uh, the strike tutorials. So I got to finish those up, get back to Iceland, and then uh, and then North Norway. So how how are you finding uh, cargo as far as uh, naval invasions going? I, it's tricky. Um, I haven't got the hang of it yet, um, and uh, I. 
I'm really tempted just to to go go back to teleport um, for the initial ones anyway, and have one or two scenarios where um, I've got to do resupply or something like that with cargo. Uh, That's it. I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt you. I, I, no, yeah, I just saying it. It, it, it is. It's a bit tricky, and I, I, I just haven't had the time or spent the time to figure it out yet. So, I don't find, at least for me, I don't find the cargo itself is uh, is really that difficult. For me, I mean, I've been trying to do a couple of, like, modern amphib scenarios. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding that, you know, as much as, you know, anybody in the USMC is probably going to hate me for saying this, the USMC really doesn't have the ability to really charge the beaches anymore. And and that's really due to just the the number of ships. I mean, to land any decent force would base you know at least in from what I've been you know kind of researching is is basically would take every amphib on you know either the Pacific or or Pacific coast just to land a, a decent marine force, and then even then they'd pretty much have to turn around and go back for reinforcements. Uh, yeah, the uh, U.S. Marine Corps is is really it seems to me operating in the. Uh, you know, in, in the ARG, sort of the amphibious ready group sort of stance right now, um, they would have a hard time, I think, without uh, some pre preparation landing more than a battalion. Uh, and they don't do it over the beaches too much anymore. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, using the, the, uh, the, the OV-22s and, and, and moving them well inland. So um, that, that's been their sort of doctrine to the best of my knowledge since about the 80s uh, with the capability of massing everybody. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've got some some colleagues who who uh, worked with the Marines quite a bit and and it's they're not really in the game of a divisional invasion anymore. Brigade or less generally. Yeah, and that's and that's really what I'm what I've kind of found in, in the couple scenarios I've, I've kind of messed with it. Um, you know, which you know is for been presenting a little bit of a challenge. You know, it's it's kind of it's hard to find a, a target that a single you know ARG can take on that's that's actually you know a worthy target, and you know finding something that that's actually interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, then again, having having an ARG show up somewhere unexpected can ruin somebody's day as well. No, that's, um, that's true. Very much true as well. If, if 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 you use it the way I think their doctrine uh, says they should use it, and and is is a power projection in a uh, a low intensity problem, um, they could they can make a difference. Uh, uh, Mogadishu, uh, the Babel Mendib, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, they don't like you know they, they they don't have staying power that's for sure. Uh, Java uh, Java Fiend asked a question about the Med. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do Northern Fury series uh, in the Med eventually. I've got one out there now, uh, Casbar Crunch I think it's called, uh, and I've got about a dozen planned for the Med. But uh, they're unfortunately a little low on the priority. All set in 1994, not 1980s. All right. All right. So I just deployed my UAV, and it looks like it can't actually. Uh, my Echo Voyager is stuck under the pole and can't actually return to my ship. So I'm gonna have to change the course of the Ohio. Uh oh. Go pick up its UAV. <laughs> Oops. We're just gonna have this go ahead and stop up here, and we'll, okay. we'll, send, we'll send the Ohio to go pick that up. I didn't realize it couldn't travel under the ice on its own. I figured. Uh, underwater, you know, unmanned vehicle would have been able to travel under the ice by itself, but apparently not. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was actually yeah, they... going to use it to kind of maybe scout out this uh, this patrol zone and leave my SSGN kind of stand off, but... Yeah. Now, it's it's got a very specific task a little later on. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it uh, you'll get a message on it uh, as as things go. Well, hopefully that's a little whiles away, so I actually got it, time to retrieve it and get back into position. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the uh, the game lasts about seven days. So. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is this is definitely a long one. I think this is probably the longer, you know, probably the longest of the. Uh, it is, yeah. Of the command lives that I've seen. It is, but I mean, uh, as as many of uh, many people have said, submarine warfare is sort of like watching paint dry. Yeah, it's that's you know, and the game is is very much you know a a product of of real life. You know, you you get you know ninety five percent boredom and about five percent actual action. Yeah. Um, I actually tried recording a a, a submarine uh, video uh, not too long ago, and or and it was it was the most boring thing to watch. And I'm like, I, I can't release this. Like, if I if I cut out all the all the you know watching and waiting, it's like a two minute video. But if I release it as it is, it's people are just gonna start clawing their eyes out. Well, and and this this scenario is kind of uh, kind of kind of unique as well. Um, I don't think I'll be giving too much of the game away, but uh, if all things go right, you'll fire one shot. Okay, that's kind of good to know. Yeah. So it's definitely not a uh, you know a Korean missile crisis where go in and just uh, and bomb everything in sight. No, no, it's uh, it's quite different. This is probably the most different scenario I've ever uh, built. Yeah. Uh, I, so I'm, sorry, yeah, I'm interested in how people. Yeah, I'm interested in how people uh, uh, like it or take it because it is uh, it is different. I definitely do like the uh, the whole uh, use of of the of spec ops teams in this. That's uh, I don't think I've really seen that done, especially the drop off and then and then pick them back up and drop them off again a little while later. I think that's yeah. uh, I don't think I've really seen that done too much yet. I've done it in a couple of the Northern Furies, but uh, but not uh, I haven't seen many scenarios with it. I'm ashamed to say I have not actually played uh, Northern Fury. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's let, a bit let, daunting. Let, 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 let the, let the, cr you know, the, the crowd come and start mobbing me with rocks. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It is, it is nothing against. I, I have heard great things about them. It's just I have, I have tried opening them, and then I just stare. It's one of those like I do the, the quintessential. I open it. I stare at the screen, going, "What do I do now?" And yeah. then I close it. And I mean, I've, I've played all of, of like Felton scenarios. I played those just fine, but for whatever reason, I will get. I swear, I will get through it someday. So, the, if, if you start with uh, the very first one, H Hour, it is uh, it is daunting. Um, uh, the some of the later ones, uh, if you don't want to stick to the chronology in that, are are much more doable. Uh, but uh, it, when you when you open up H Hour, the very first one, uh, you've got a couple of uh, F-16s, and you're facing a Russian horde of several hundred aircraft, so it's it's a bit daunting. Yeah, and that that's pretty much what I did. I said, all right, well, <laughs> where, where's the where's the best place to start with this? Well, to follow the story, we'll go ahead and start with uh, with scenario one. And yeah, I I saw that, and I'm like, um, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, as if there's any consolation, the object of scenario one is survival. Uh, it's not to win. Um, the uh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was listening. I was gonna say something, but sorry, we don't mean to keep interrupting. I'm not trying to do it on purpose. But... No, no. Um, yeah, the uh, some of the later ones, uh, the carrier battles around Iceland um, are are much more standard, if you will, uh, starting with uh, number eight. And uh, actually, number six is uh, is pretty good. Uh, I'm just trying to remember the name. Uh, Vega or, or uh, plug the gap. Um, so those, some of those are pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll definitely keep those in mind uh, next time I uh, I give it a shot. I, I actually between the the game improvements to to the you know that they've done in probably about the last year i think i could actually stream those scenarios now um <laughs> and i also i also just uh like this is the first stream with a with a brand new pc and god i forgot what like new hardware was like so yeah um i'm uh i'm i may actually may actually give it a shot and and finally kind of like get through it and figured if, if anybody if everybody else can do it i i definitely can do it myself <laughs> uh, just to answer the question on the stream, yeah, the weather uh, the weather is randomized and changes every four hours, so, or there's a chance it'll change every four hours. 
Now, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how was how was that descript? I know I've I've done that a, a couple of times, or have tried to do it a couple of times, and I I really kind of found it not really daunting, but I it, I either couldn't get it to to change believably like slowly, like it would like conditions would slowly deteriorate, or it would just you know you'd go from like rain instantly to like a thunderstorm. So if you um... It's a pretty standard script, but uh, it's it's messing with the parameters. And if you keep a reasonably uh, tight rein on the parameters, it's not going to go radical hurricane to calm. Um, and then uh, and then you put it on a uh, on a timed event, and just put a percentage chance that that event will fire. You know, uh, and so I think. I think it's a eight or nine percent chance it'll fire every four hours or something like that. Um, so there's a good chance that you'll go two days without a weather change, and then when it does change, it shouldn't be radical. Yeah, one thing I, I know I've kind of considered now that we can use uh, Lua scripts as a condition was to basically set it as as kind of either a, a key store or as a, a you know dummy side with points of like, all right, so if it rolls. You know, bad weather to good weather over the course of you know, say, twelve hours. Um, you know, each one would basically you know, if you had a couple different options of like, it would stay good all the way through, or if it would you know, say, deteriorate. You could use a condition basically to you know, trigger the next you know, link in the chain. Basically, I think is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, that's probably more complicated than my Lewis skills will allow. Uh, I consider myself a Lua numpty, and uh, if if I get something working, I save it and reuse it as often as I can. Oh yeah, um, I am <laughs> I am far from a Lua expert, and I, I typically uh, get over ambitious. I think is is a polite term for uh, my uh, my general you know skill level when it comes to when it comes to Lua. I, yeah. That, that's usually where I kind of actually burn out on my scenarios is I try to get you know too ambitious and yeah. then I, I I burn out on it. Well, the uh, the the trick I find with, uh, with with doing it is I try and do it with non Lua events first, and you can do a lot of things if you just sit sit back and and uh, and look at all the options you have. If I can't do that, then then I go to what I know. And uh, you can get a lot done, and don't get too aggressive with it. That's that's my motto because it will generally screw up. All right. So we I actually noticed we just have we have an Ohio just kind of cruising the uh, region up here. Yeah, you got two of them up there. Uh, oh yeah. We've, well, there's my Voyager. Where is my second one at? There's the West Virginia. <laughs> It should be further to the, where are you now? It should be further towards uh, northern Canada. Oh, there it is, USS Maine. Yeah. Just kind of hanging off the uh, the uh, northern Alaska Canadian coast. Yeah. Really hope we don't have to use them. I'm seeing a lot of targets that you could use them on. Well, the the... the there's a lot of color in this uh, in this one as well. Um, they're not the only SSBNs in the Arctic, um, and it's really bad if anybody loses one. Uh oh. <laughs> as as I would imagine in, in real life, if if an SSBN yeah. goes missing, uh, that's probably not going to you know 